the way that you would visualize your life is 110% achievable and possible. I started a movement from absolutely nothing but an idea. And I genuinely can sit here and tell you today that I couldn't imagine doing anything else in my life. It's the Health in the Real World podcast. It's time to start the show with Chris Jenke as your host. Here to give you everything that you need when it comes to fitness strategies. We keep it simple and easy. It's your roadmap to get healthy. You don't need equipment and you don't need a gym. Just the right strategies to get you fit and trim. Welcome to the Health in the Real World podcast. I'm here today with Mia St. Aubain. Uh, French was not my specialty, but hopefully I did all right with that one, Mia. Uh, Mia has been active since birth, influenced by her mother's Canadian and world triathlon achievements and her father's success as a staff sergeant uh, with the OPP, uh, always outrunning his recruits. And she's grateful for uh, her role models who valued health and fitness and that's kind of where she is right now. Uh, Mia, let's get started with that. And then we can talk about all these other cool things that you've been up to. So first of all, thank you for joining me on the podcast. Yeah, thanks for so much for having me. This is great. Sure, absolutely. So it says after you competed for years as a national level track and field uh, athlete, mm -hmm. and you knew just like your parents that you wanted to be a fitness role model, and then you experienced some health issues of your own. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So I think I came by it, honestly, like you were just saying, I grew up in a family where we were always active. We were never like, there was no TV during the day. That was absolutely not something that was allowed. So we were constantly outside in uh, grade five. My mom had this genius idea that every Wednesday I needed to get a newspaper for a school project. So instead of driving or walking to the corner store, we were going to run. And so I begrudgingly tell this story of how I would reluctantly put on my running shoes and do the run with her and then go to the beach. And I'm talking about like, this was like a five minute run. But over time, I ended up kind of seeing it, you know, you grow up with it. And we spent every Saturday morning with mom on her training at the, at the water, watching her swim and making sure she didn't get hit by a boat. And um, I'd watch my dad at the academy literally take over his recruits, you know, so I kind of fell into it and then ended up falling in love with track and field. So not to the length that my mom liked it for distances, but I like shorter distances. So I competed for years in varsity and then ran on the Canadian paranational team. I was a guide runner for several years um, with a blind athlete on the team. So incredible, incredible experiences. But I was also working as a personal trainer, 13 hour days, easily with my eyes closed you know, still training three hours a day, maybe getting four hours of sleep on a good night. It was ludicrous. I look back on wow. it now and I don't understand how I even survived it. So how, I was, how long it, were you doing that for? Like years and years and years? Oh, well, I mean, I competed. I competed for at least 10 years. Um, but that stint of that insanity was a good six, seven years. Yeah. It. So, just, so just really pushing hard, not really recovering enough. And then that sort of blew up, right? That, that you had a big experience, a big diagnosis. So I was standing in the bathroom one day and I found a lump in my throat and there's something with lumps, right? Like if, <laughs> if it's like a scratch or something else, you're kind of like, oh, that's weird. But the lump is always a sign that this can't be good. Sure. So I remember getting the call one day, um, being told that I had papillary thyroid cancer and just the word cancer, I remember where I was, I remember what I was doing, it just completely throws you off. And after the shock of it wore off, I sat back and I said, it makes sense. <laughs> there was not a part of me that was actually very surprised by it. And so it led to a whole whirlwind of recovery and led me to actually found a national movement um, here in our nation's capital in Ottawa to actually educate Canadians um, and the world eventually of how to actually take care of themselves and listen to these warning signs. Um, because my wholehearted belief is my family calls me, my friends call me Miss Fitness Canada as a joke, but not a joke. <laughs> so if this could happen to me, it can literally happen to anybody. And so I talk about the warning signs of listening to your body and paying attention. And this concept of harder, better, faster, stronger 
exercise and working out as being the only way to your health is completely flawed. And I'm proof of that. So what are some, what are some of those practical ways that you'd recommend to somebody who wants to get healthy, not necessarily fit, but healthy as you were referring to? Yeah. So I started down this journey. I, I launched the, the movement. So it's a lunchtime workout up on Parliament Hill here in Ottawa is where it started. It's called Move Camp. And now we've moved to Canadian landmarks across the country, getting Canadians moving. And when I started the project, it was just something to get out of my own way and out of my own drama of what was happening in my life at the time. That was my personal rock bottom. I was flat broke. My health was not great. And I didn't know what direction my life was going into. So I started this movement. And it ended up healing myself because it was of service. I did something that I was passionate about. I was serving Canadians. And then one by one, people kept showing up. So what I realized from that experience is that it very much starts from the inside out. So I tell everybody I connect with, all of our community members, your health first and foremost starts from you and starts from inside. And that goes so against what we're normally taught um, especially in, in mass media, we think, you know, we've got to eat clean and eat less food and uh, work out harder, do more hit style right. training. You and have to so do three that. sets of 10 of this exercise, followed yeah. by that one exercise, and then down the list. Don't kill right? yourself. <laughs> right, right. Basically with sweat. Um, and if you don't sweat your brains out, then it's not effective. Right. Um, so I, I was heavily journaling at the time. I was taking a personal development course. It's where my personal development journey started. My meditation practice started. Um, and so that's what I, the first and foremost thing I recommend is journaling about what is this person look like? What is this type of person that you're aspiring to be? Is there, is he or she very energetic? Are you the type of person that wakes up without, out, without an alarm? What does that look like? And what does that mean for you? Because without that, you're, you're really just trying to, you know, accomplish these, these small incremental goals and you're not creating this lifestyle. And that's what I really, really preach about. I like that distinction, small incremental goals versus you're, you created like from scratch, this person who you wanted to be. So it's interesting too, though, that, you know, I would say most people, at least in the, the Western world are uh, undertrained and you are drastically overtrained. You're almost like addicted to fitness, right? How, so how do you get somebody who, who was where you were, which you were just like going so far above the mark. It's hard to get through to some people. Like I, I used to be one of those people mm -hmm. for maybe four or five years. And I realized myself when I saw a friend of mine get into a little bit of trouble with, with her body. Um, and, but how, what would you tell somebody who was like you 15 years ago? Um, stop. <laughs> um, where are you putting <laughs> your worth? Um, I genuinely had the, you would never have guessed it on the outside, but I was very insecure. I didn't have the best self-love and self-esteem. And I put my worth into the track. I put my worth into the time on a clock. And I think we often do that. And I, I see what you're saying and that people, you feel like people are undertrained. I feel like they don't move their bodies enough on a regular basis, but we actually, we do too much. And so I would say is yeah. assessing where your life is at right now. Most people don't sleep enough. They're overstressed, especially right now. Like we've got so much on our plates. We're overstressed and overstimulated throughout the day. Our nervous system is through the roof. And then we take that at the end of the day, when we have the least amount of energy and we try and do a high intensity workout. Right. So my son, I have distinct memories of being on the side of the road on the way to the track, just beside myself, calling my mom in tears because I was utterly exhausted and still felt like I had to get to the track. Mm, and I feel like right. every day we, most people have some sort of version of that, right? You feel guilty because you're not getting your workout in when in reality, you're overstressed to begin with. So I would start in your personal life. And if you're feeling like you can't fit it in, or you feel like there's not enough hours in the day, that is a... A, a, a product of the way that you've designed your life and that needs to change and that's a harsh thing to look at and it can be very difficult to adjust but you don't need more working out you need to adjust ad address your stress levels right okay. that person may need more free time they may need, they might need to just take like a one mile walk you know yeah. for 15 20 minutes and just breathe and look at the birds and and enjoy their life right and slow down in with some very basic movements but uh, absolutely. I mean, it's all it all depends on where somebody's kind of going off off kilter. What so 
So now, where do you struggle with your health and fitness now? I think I really like this question because, uh, you know, obviously you've already shown us that you've had your battles, but, you know, we all are constantly trying to improve as people. So where, where are you right now? Like, where do you struggle with your health and fitness now? And what have you tried to overcome that? I'd still say that I'm overcoming some effects of, of having thyroid cancer. You know, my body didn't just develop that lump for no reason. There was underlying thyroid issues, adrenal issues, and that's ongoing for me. That is something that I feel like a lot of people listening who are classify themselves as high achievers, <laughs> um, you will have similar experiences, right? You constantly feel like you want to do more, you want to push more. So I still love running so much, but I know on a lot of days, it's not the best thing for my body. On a lot of days, I probably just need to go for a walk or I need to, I started doing Pilates, which I never in a million years did I ever think I would do. Mm -hmm. um, so like that, still that little bit of battle of, do I need more rest or can I go, can I get a run in? So are you doing, you started Pilates more of like a recovery, flexibility, range of motion type stuff? No, just a, a different type of movement to have mm -hmm. some movement where I would finish a movement session and feel great instead yeah. of feeling completed. Instead of uh, feeling like just beat up by your run or, or whatever else you were doing. Yeah. But mm -hmm. a huge thing that helped myself uh, being female was learning more about my cycles and having such an in-tune, in-depth understanding of your different hormone levels and your different energy levels, depending on where your cycle is at during the month, which was, you know, I'm 35 years old now and just learned about this last year and was out outraged, outraged mm. that this is not something that is taught specifically to women. Sorry guys right now, but um, this is, you know, who I primarily work with is learning where your energy levels peak and where you need and you operate best with more rest and recovery throughout the month, going with your cycle instead of trying to go against it was the best thing I've ever learned from my body. That makes a lot of sense. Um, and I, I would say this, even, you know, even to include the guys out there, it's the same with men, although different, you know, but we, we have days where we don't, we shouldn't work out, you know, we're tired. And like you said, maybe you did a track run yesterday or the day before and your body's still recovering from that. And there's all kinds of variables and to follow like a sheet, you know, I have to do this, I have to do this. Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes we have to go inside and really uh, listen, right? Listen to what's happening. Yeah. So um, Mia, this has been great as far as uh, fitness and learning about your story. I want to go really big picture now. Uh, let's say you were invited to give a motivational speech at either like a university or a corporate event. What's your uh, one to two minute motivational speech talking about like real big picture stuff, goal setting, you know, life values, things like that? I would say that the way that you would visualize your life is 110% achievable and possible. I started a movement from absolutely nothing but an idea. And I genuinely can sit here and tell you today that I couldn't imagine doing anything else in my life. Um, the practices that I started, I took a course called um, Thinking Into Results. I started journaling. I started visualizing. I started writing on affirmations. All the things that you hear the greats talk about seems and feels a little bit out there, but it changed my entire life. I saw a woman at a conference holding her journal and reading about the impact that this type of practice had had on her life. And that has stuck with me for 10 years because it's exactly what's gone on in my life. I pictured myself with a headset at an event, um, running these series of events at major landmarks across the country and to live that experience, to visualize it for years and then to physically have your feet on the ground, living that experience is, you know, what, what life is made of. And so I know, and I believe that we have that in, in ourselves, every single one of us, we have a purpose and we have a reason that we're here. And it's just up to us to dig deep and find out what that is and give ourselves permission um, to live the life that we envisioned and that we visualize and that we dream about because it 100% is possible. Absolutely. That's great. Uh, Mia, how do people get, uh, get in touch with you, uh, your website, social media? You can check out the um, event series itself, the movement at movecamp.ca. We are on a mission to move 1 million Canadians, the Million Movers Movement. And you can check out my Instagram at Mia St. Aubain. Great. Thank you so much. So again, Mia St. Aubain, right? Mia St. Aubain, sorry. <laughs> Nailed it.
All right. Um, well, thank you so much for joining me today. Health in the Real World podcast. Really appreciate having you on. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for listening to the Health in the Real World show. Make sure to like and subscribe and comment down below. Visit mycorebalance.com to learn more.